name is Judy Niemeyer, and if you remember, you've been following me through the first part of this um, pattern here. The block that we're going to do right now for paper piecing is the very center block of this quilt, and the unit number on there is AC1 of the moon catcher. So we've already done four of them for you today so that you can see what we have. And if you look, we have a section one, a section two, section three, section four, and a section five. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna run you guys through a video that I do for all of my students when they come and take a workshop from me. It's going to be very informal, as I always am, and it's gonna take you through all the steps um, that I would actually teach my students when they are here for pa foundation paper piecing. So we're going to start over here and we have our pattern, our papers, and when we got through stacking the other day they looked just like this. Um, normally we would have eight papers in this stack but I reduced it down to four so you didn't have to watch me do paper piecing on eight pieces. So our foundation papers are right underneath here. Everything is in the order in which we're going to sew it together. All of our sew sides are like this, and now you're going to understand why we have a call, what we call a sew side. All right? So we're going to get started. Look close to see what I'm doing. So the first thing we want to do here is we're, we have to put the fabric under section one. For somebody that's brand new to paper piecing, Sometimes that's very difficult because they don't know how to center it or what to look for. On our foundation papers, what we do is we actually give you the area in which you need to set the fabric over the top of that. This is the very first fabric and if you look, this says section one template AC1-1. And over here on the template, it says the same thing, section one template AC1-1. So you always want to match them up and make sure you're using the right template. The very first piece that you put onto the back side of your foundation paper always has to be wrong side up. And our fabrics are all cut right side up, unless for some specific reason we tell you to do it wrong side up. So what I'm gonna do is show you how I can find where this section is because we're actually working off of the back side of the paper which for most people tells them absolutely nothing. So when I take my, I, this is a fold template here and I'll try to repeat the name of the tools as we use them. But on our fold template we have these dash lines. We're going to actually take and line the fold template up with the dash line that's next to line one and I'm going to crease the paper. Then I'm going to take the fold template and I'm going to crease the paper on that one and that's line two. So now when I flip it over, I actually have these creased lines here. And in our instructions, if you're reading the instructions, it always tells you to trace the back side of the paper. So if you go to a window or you have a light table, you can actually do the tracing on all of the dashed lines to begin with and then you don't have to do the fold back. But we're going to do the fold back right now. I'm going to take this, now I'm going to mark that line and I'm going to use a pencil to mark the creased lines. So now when I look at this, I now have the shape that I need to find on here. Okay. Now I use the edge of my paper and when we cut these out I told you guys to only do an eighth of an inch on both sides. That way it's easy to center that piece. So now what I like to do is I like to take my paper and I like to flip it over and match up the lines right with the paper so that I know exactly where that piece is going to be fit. And if you just lift it up in the air, you'll be able to match it because the lines, the printed lines are dark enough. So now all I have to do is look at that and I can take my first piece of fabric and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to lay it right on that piece of paper. Then I'm going to take my next piece of paper right here and I'm going to put a little bit of glue 
along the edges here on that seam allowance. Don't butter it because if you do, you may not be able to get the paper back off. So I like to just keep it along the edges. Now I can just match this piece right up. Look at the paper. You can see the printed side. And I matched everything up with the piece that I had underneath it. Now we're going to take our next piece of fabric and get rid of the fabric number and I'm going to flip this one over and I'm going to lay that one right side up or this is wrong side up now and then we're going to take our foundation paper we're going to put a little bit of glue along that edge and we're going to match everything up again then we're going to take the next piece we're going to flip that wrong side up and then we'll put a little bit of glue on the back side and match it up. And now I'm going to come back here to the very first piece that I used that had the lines on it. And I'm going to take my next piece of fabric, flip it wrong side up, and I'm going to put my glue along those edges like that. And then I'm going to place this one. So. The idea here is that when you're done, you have to have the fabric on the back side and it has to cover that whole piece, including these dashed lines, because the dashed lines are your seam allowance. And once you get everything lined up, we're done with that template, All right? So now we're gonna find the fold template. Again, we're gonna set these papers over and we're gonna start a chain piecing process. So I placed my fold template on the solid line that's marked line one. I fold the foundation paper back over the fold template. I pick up my add a quarter ruler, and then we're gonna take a rotary cutter and we're gonna trim the excess fabric. I'm gonna move my glue stick out of the way so I don't wear it here. Now I'm gonna pick up this and I'm gonna flip, lay this up here on my table just like that. Okay. And trim. And then we're going to stack. Now, for those of you that don't know what an out of quarter ruler is, an out of quarter ruler has a lip on the back side here. So it allows you to press, push it up against that fold template and your fabric, and then it stops. Sometimes it'll slip over the top but most of the time it'll catch right against that template. And that's why we use the out of quarter. And then it trims us a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so now I have my three pieces here. This is my sew side right here. So when I say to stack everything, now I know which edge of this piece matches up here. And the sew side is the side that you're gonna sew. So we're gonna take this template piece now the first thing we have to do is figure out, well, where do I line that up? So again, we're going to pull our fold template over here, and I'm going to find section 2, and I'm going to find the dashed lines that go around the edge of section 2, and we're going to crease those dashed lines. And I wouldn't have to do this if I'd actually take, gone to the effort to trace everything at a window or at a light table. Now when I fold it back, I'm going to find my crease lines and I'm just going to mark them just like this. All right. So now when I do that, I can actually take my paper template and I can lay that paper template down and see exactly where I need to line it up to the fabric that's underneath because all of my fabric should be positioned exactly the same. So if I look at that, I can tell that I just have to match up this tip and this tip with my fabric. So the very first piece of fabric I'm going to pick up, I'm going to match it up just like this. Okay. So what I want to double check is that I have fabric along that edge, that I have fabric if I fold it back along that edge. So the fabric's going to set basically right there. When we design a template, all you need to worry about is which way to slide this to make sure that the fabric is underneath the section that we're trying to cover. Once you figure out your first piece, then you just have to copycat the rest. So now I'm going to take my next piece 
and I'm going to actually line it up just off the side there and try to keep this lined up the same place. And creasing the paper helps that lay down better. Then I'm going to pick this up. Notice that my fingers are, I'm pinching the fabric to the paper right here. And then I just take my fingers and I hold the other piece down and then I slide that until I have it into position. Right, then we take the next piece, we're going to put it on here just like that and line it up so it's staying basically straight. And then I'm going to hold this up and I'm going to position that one. So I don't really have to mark every single piece. I just have to mark that first one to know where to get started when I'm doing my chain piecing. And now we have all three of these done. Okay. Now, this is a pretty little piece. I can pick these up, take it to the machine, and sew them really easy. But when I'm working with a beginner, sometimes it's hard for them to get that up there to the machine without losing half the fabric underneath it. So this is a really good little trick. So this is a glue pin, all right? And it just rolls up like that. You can get them in almost all quilt stores. And I just lift up that edge of the fabric along the raw edge and I just put a little bit of glue there. And then I push the fabric into the glue. And then we just lift the next piece up. We push the fabric into the glue. We don't have to over glue it. All it needs is just a little bit of glue. And I use the glue pin because it's narrow. And this is a lot better fabric glue. It's fabric to fabric where my Yoohoo stick that I used earlier works better when I'm working with fabric and paper. But right now I'm just working with fabric and so I like this glue pin for that. So now when I pick this up, see my pieces, the raw edges are staying together and I can hold that in position. All right. So we have everything setting up the machine. We're going to take and we're, we have to open this up. And what I like to do is see, do I want to open up this way at my machine or do I want to open it like this? And I'm going to look at this and decide which way I want to turn it. And I've decided that I want to start here and sew this direction. So I'm actually going to take and turn all of my paper around like this. So line one, you're going to line it right up to the solid line. You want to set your stitch length at somewhere around a 1.8, depending on which machine you use. Sometimes I do a 1.5 and sometimes I'll go up to a 2. The idea is that when you, re when you start tearing your paper away, that it's not pulling the stitches loose. So it needs to be tight enough that it, the paper will tear from it. But if you get it too tight, then you can't pick it out if you make a mistake. So there's just a, you have to do a little bit of test to see it, which way you want to actually, um, how tight you want that stitch. And on this machine, I normally sew with a 1.8. So I'm gonna adjust my stitch length down right now. And then I'm gonna start sewing. I'm going to sew past, there's a dashed line here, I want to sew about two to three stitches past that dashed line and you'll find out later why I do that, right? Then we pick up the next piece. If you have a machine that has a needle cutter or a thread cutter, then you should push and cut the thread and then move the paper off to the side. If you have a machine that doesn't have a thread cutter, then just lift your needle and your pressure foot and then come in and place it on the next piece, slide it off to the edge like that, and sew on line one again. So now we're going to stop. We're going to cut our thread. If you have any thread cutter, use the one that you have on your machine. And now we're going to take our scissors and we're just going to cut the threads in between each piece. And I like to cut my um, threads fairly close to the edge. I don't have to worry too much about it because when I do my trimming it's going to clean a lot of those threads off. Now we're going to take these four pieces to my iron and we're going to press. So we're going to move over here to this by this. When you're ironing with paper I like to have steam. Alright 
lot of people tell you don't use steam because steam will shrink the paper and they're tr it's the truth. It does, but if you're careful with it, you're not going to shrink your paper. I've been using steam for 22 years and there's not a one of my quilts that I haven't been able to put together because I shrunk the paper too much. All right, so now we're just going to press and we want to make sure that we get that seam pressed open. And sometimes it's best for you to actually do a little finger pressing first and then just press into the seam so you don't get a, puck, a pleat in there. A lot of people will, when they're new, they'll just set their iron down and then when you look at it, you can actually pull it apart because they've pressed a little fold right on that seam line. And you want to avoid that. The idea is to keep that pressed open. Okay, so notice that I didn't use too much steam. One sign of using too much steam is it causes the paper to curl, right? But you can still use it. So we're gonna go back over to our cutting board now. We want to position our papers right side up and we need to find line two, okay? So line two is going to be right along here, right? And we're going to position those in the position of how I want to cut, which I am right-handed. If you're left-handed, you would probably want it set up like this, right? So right-handed, we're going to pick this up. I'm going to take my first piece and I'm going to place the fold template along line two, which is the solid line, and then I'm going to fold the paper back. Now because I stitched all the way past that dashed line, I have to bring the fabric with it. So I'm just going to pick up on the fabric and tear that just a little bit like that, right? It doesn't matter if you tear it too far or tear a big hole in your paper because you're going to remove all the paper before you sew the quilt up anyway. So. Now we're just going to take our rotary cutter and we're going to trim and that cut all of my threads off for me. Now I just have to crease my paper and then we're going to pick up the next one. So now we're on our very last piece um, that we trimmed. Now we have to find where the third piece of fabric is going to go. And so here's section three. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you one other trick here that I like to do because I don't like to be, have a lot of excess fabric along the edges of my paper. So I'm just going to restack all of these. And at this point, I'm going to just take my ruler and I'm going to get rid of some of that excess fabric along that edge as well as some of this. You have to be a little careful because if you get too many of them stacked, sometimes you can cut through the paper, right? So now that we have that cleaned up, now I can see where the edge is. And then I have to come up here and figure out how far up do I have to be here so we can do our same trick here. We can fold that piece back like that. And then we can fold this one back. And then when I open it up, I can see where my mark is, how far up. All right, another shortcut that you can do is just open this up and before you fold it back, just take your pencil and poke a hole through there because now I can see exactly where that is, right? So we're going to take our next piece. We're done with that template. And this is AC31. And always check to make sure you're putting the right template on, just in case you stacked it wrong. All right, this is my sew side, so I just bring these pieces over. We're going to lay this down, pull it straight towards me. And I'm going to, I can see right here where I need to be, and I need to be right along the edge of this paper right here, not this one. So I'm going to put my finger on both points there, and I'm going to go double check. I have lots here, and I have plenty here, but I have a lot more here, so I'm just going to move it just a little bit more up that direction, all right? Because then it centers it a little bit more, and I don't have to worry about it not 
catching the next piece. Then we're going to take this piece, hold my paper back like this. We're going to position that one right in place. We take the next one, put it on. And the only reason I'm folding my paper back is because I'd opened it up so I could trim off that excess. Otherwise, it would have already been folded back. And then we go to our machine and we're going to quickly sew those seams again. Open the paper and start to sew. Again, we're going to sew past the line, the dashed line. Then we're going to lift our needle, slide the next piece in. side up we're going to flip them over and we're going to find line three we're going to start right here pull that out get our add a quarter roller and we're going to trim now we're ready to add the next piece so we're going to pick up section four. This is my sew side. And this piece right here, the sew side only fits right here. But when I lay my paper down, it looks like I'm not going to have any fabric under this edge. So what's happening here is I have one line that this last seam actually cuts that piece off. So we only gave you the sew side on the sew line right there. Right? So we're going to fold this back. And I'm going to mark that line for you so that you can see where that's going to fold back at. So this is my dash, my line that I marked. So now when I fold that back, I don't have to have fabric underneath this section here. Okay. So we're going to grab our very first piece. We're going to position it and we're going to make sure that it sets under that section just like that. So you can see that I have plenty of fabric because I only have to fab under there. So now we're going to take the next piece. I've been showing you how to glue everything. This time I'm not going to show you how to glue because I want you to see that you can actually do this without gluing each one. So we're actually going to take this and pick it up and bring it to my machine. I'm actually going to turn it like this so that I can sew in this direction. So I'm going to pick the first piece up and that's why I stagger them so I can get my fingers underneath there and pick it up. And I'm not going to move my hand. I'm going to hold it in position the whole time. So after I get this hand then I'm going to open the paper and put my hand back on it and then we start sewing. All right. Then I have to get up here before I really start down my line. I want to match this side to make sure my fabric is lining up. And then I put the weight right there. If this is a really long seam, I really recommend the gluing. Then we're going to take the next piece. You may wonder why I don't just do finger pressing or why I don't use some little tools that actually will press those seams. The reason I like to use a steam iron is because it keeps this flat and when all I do is finger pressing it's always folded and folding back on me and it just doesn't lay as nice so that's why I use a steam iron because I want it to be really flat and crisp. So now we're going to start with line four, fold back. We're going to complete all the trimming for the next, the last piece here. Nice 
sew side. So you can bring these up like this, place this down. And this one I don't have to mark anything, I just have to make sure that it fits. And there's plenty of room to fit on that one. So then we're going to take the next piece, position it right under there. And one thing I might mention to you is if the dark fabric is on the bottom when you're doing paper piecing, you don't have to worry about whether or not there's going to be a shadow. If the light fabric is on the bottom, then you need to offset it just a little bit to where you can see the light fabric show because it will leave a shadow. And my dark is on the bottom, so I'm not worried about it right now. So we just have one more set of lines here to sew. Now we're going to do some trimming. I got it. <laughs> and what we want to find now is a little bit bigger ruler. I'm actually just going to use this one because I like to put the weight on the paper. And then we're going to line that up. And we're going to cut right along that straight line. Then we're going to swing this around. Then we're going to cut a smart corner and another smart corner, another long straight line, and now we have a curved line. So to do the curve, what I like to do is take my blade and get it started right here at the top of my curve, and then I just move the paper and I just basically roll forward, and I do what I call free motion curved trimming. And it's all nice and trimmed the way we want. And then we're going to do the next one. So one of the things that you're going to find as we go through these videos is I'm going to start showing you different shortcuts along the way and different things that will speed up what you're doing. The video that we just did is probably the first, um, the last video video you're going to see where we actually took you through the whole process of paper piecing. Right. And these are our pieces. Thank you. Okay, the next unit in Moonstar that we're going to work on is unit AC2. And AC2 is very similar to paper piecing that we did in unit 1. I'm not going to make you watch me um, do four of these, but I am going to get you started, okay? So we have just four papers. I'm going to put the first two units on, and then I'll come back and show you how to trim them. Alright, so all of our papers are still stacked, our fabrics. We're going to start with section one, and these are really tiny pieces, so we just have to flip the first piece over. We're going to grab our glue pen. I don't have a glue stick today, so we're just going to go like that. We're going to put this piece right on. I don't really have to mark anything because these pieces are set up in order to get all of the angles correct. We always have quite a bit left over on the first and last piece. So it's easy to position everything on there without any marks. Then we're going to take the next piece and we're going to lay it right on top and then we're going to match up the papers, put that piece on, and lay the next one on. And remember, I have the wrong side facing up. This fabric is a really light colored fabric, so the glue stick that I'm using, or the glue pen if you want to call it, is probably the better choice than a Yoohoo because we don't want the fabric and paper to stick to that, uh, the glue and the paper to stick to this fabric, right? So, we have all four pieces. Then we're going to grab our fold template. 
We're going to place it on line one, fold back the foundation paper, put the add a quarter on, and trim. And today I'm going to actually show you a shortcut, and that would include after you trim, you stack the next piece instead of trimming everything. We can actually trim and stack. So I'm going to take this piece, set it there like that. We're going to open the paper back up and I'm going to find the edge of section two, fold it back. And then all I have to do is we're just going to mark that line there. And then I'm going to position that. Then I take the next piece of fabric, lay it right on the top. Pick up the next piece of paper, fold it back, put the outer quarter ruler on, trim, and I stack. Then we take the fabric, place it on top like this, fold template, place it, fold it back, place the outer quarter ruler and trim. And then we stack. Fabric. Place the old template on line one, fold back the paper, add a quarter, trim, and stack. Okay, these pieces are pretty little so I'm just going to pick them all up. I'm not going to glue the edges, I'm just going to take them, bring them to my machine, and I'm actually going to roll them around so I can open them up this way. Pick the first piece up, open the paper, and sew on line one. And remember, we have to have our stitch length at a 1.8 on my machine, and then I'm going to sew. how to prepare for a floating point. All of our foundation papers are designed with not only floating points at the top but at the bottom. And in order to have a floating point you have to sew over another line. So when I come back here to trim, I'm going to place my fold template on line two. Okay, then I'm going to pick up my paper and I'm going to put my finger right at the end of the stitch line and I'm going to tear the paper until it hits the fold template, then I fold it back, put the add a quarter on, and trim my line. Then we're going to take our fabric pieces here. This is my sew side. I'm going to pick that piece up. But before I show, um, go any further, I want to show you that when you do this, quite often you end up with a hole setting right in here from your paper. And it's okay. It actually makes it easier to remove the paper when you get ready to remove it. So then we're going to place that piece on here like that. And you want to make sure that you have fabric past this part right here, which I do, and fabric past that point. Then we're going to pick up our next piece of fabric, position it on there, Place the fold template on line two on the foundation paper, fold back the fabric with the paper, tear it back, that's another way you can do it, and trim. And then we're going to stack. Now we're going to take this fabric, we're going to place it on here like this. Now I'm going to place the fold template on line two. And the first technique I showed you was to put my finger right here at the end of the line and tear the paper from the top back till it hits the fold template, fold it back, add a quarter, and trim. We're going to stack. Now we're going to put the fold template on line two. And I'm going to show you the second technique. And I have a tendency to move back and forth between these techniques. Normally it depends on the position of the paper. So I'm going to fold this back, 
I brought the fabric with it and then I just pick up on the t fabric and I tear it back and it tears that hole the same way just from a different angle and then we're going to put our fabric here and we're going to stack And that's all I'm going to show you for the paper piecing because you don't need to watch the rest of it. Okay, we have all the paper piecing done. So now I'm going to quickly show you how to trim this unit. So I'm just going to grab my little ruler here and I'm going to cut the ends. I'm going to flip it over and cut the straight edge. And again, we're going to take these pieces and just Kind of turn the paper right underneath the blade. And then we're going to do the top one. And then we're done. And now the next job is to remove all the foundation paper. And you don't need to watch me remove the paper. a few of you guys out there today. So we're actually going to continue with the paper piecing for the moon star. And the unit that I have here is called unit AC3. And what it has on it is a curved piece. And so I have a technique that I'd like to show you guys how this is done. I don't have a name for the technique other than I call it putting on a vein or I also call it curved paper piecing and um, it's it's very cool when you're done you won't have this is the best way I've ever seen to sew anything onto a curved unit so we're going to show you how to do these all right my papers I have them um, clipped to the top of my stack my stack is already uh, clipped together because we did the stacking in another video, right? So we're going to start with the very first piece, which is section one. And section one is really easy to figure out where it goes. We're going to flip this over and so that my wrong sides are facing up. Then I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to position this to kind of see where it needs to sit on our piece, okay? And I need to have excess room past here. We want to make sure we see everything past um, the bottom part of our lines. Once I know where that's at, I can take the next, my first piece of fabric, and I'm going to lay it right on top. And then we're going to grab our glue pin. And on this piece, we're going to actually run the glue along the edges here. And then just a little bit, kind of where I believe that curve is setting. And then I'm going to match it up with the piece underneath. Then we're going to take the next color, put it on top. I'm going to run that glue. I like to run the glue along the edges, especially on something that's really a light color because I don't want the newsprint to show or the glue to show through those pieces and if I don't have to um, if I get too much glue it's going to leave a shadow the other thing that you may want to do is you can use your fabric glue pin because once it dries it pops free of the paper and it won't leave all of the messy uh, sticky glue and paper on the back. So you can actually use these pins and you can get these in different colors. However, once it dries, the color goes away. Okay, so then we're going to take our last piece and remember my last first piece of paper I put underneath here. We can throw our template away and then we're going to take this these pieces on here like this. Alright, so now we have everything on there. Now it's time to put my glasses back on so I can see what I'm doing. Now we're going to take the glue stick and get rid of that. 
Now the next step that we have to do here is to sew on a basting, a basting line. And I have a dash line set here and it says basting stitch line one. And we have to sew on that line. We now have our papers at our machine. We're gonna start right here. The basting stitch line, I normally set my machine at about uh, 2.8. You don't want it to be a really loose stitch, and it doesn't have to be really tight. Um, if you forget one way or the other, don't worry about it because we're going to trim all that basting stitches, all those basting stitches off when we're all done, so there won't be any threads left from it. So we're going to get started sewing, and I'm going to change my stitch length here to about a 2.8. And then I'm going to stitch right on the line. Now it's important to stitch on the line because we're going to use that basting stitch line as our quarter inch guide. And if you're sloppy with your sewing, then your seam allowance is probably going to be sloppy as well. So stay on the line. up the next piece. Okay, once I get the basting stitch line done, the next thing it's going to tell you in the pattern is to come back and sew the TRP lines. Um, most of you probably have no idea what a TRP line is. So what we do with our uh, curved patterns is we actually put these sew lines right here and what this is is it's a registration line that we want to stay in place as we're doing our curved piecing. Some people look at it and they go, I'm not doing that, but most of the time what happens is they, they fight not knowing where to position something and you're going to see the advantage of using a TRP line. So in your instructions, it tells me right now to sew the TRP lines, and there's an arrow that points to this one right here, and it says that's TRP line number one, and we're going to sew each one of those on the paper. And we want to stop at the dot that tells us where to, there's a dot there. And we want to stop right at that dot. And the TRP lines, um, I like them to be a little bit smaller than the basting stitch lines. But if you sew the bigger stitch, that's fine as well. It's just they have a tendency to come out more with when you remove the paper. When you get done with your TRP lines, you want to take your scissors and you want to cut the threads right at the paper, flip it over and cut the threads on the back. If you don't cut these threads off, then every time you sew a seam, you're going to be moving those threads and trying to pull them out of the way and eventually all of your um, TRP lines are going to be in the garbage because every time you pull on them, they're going to come out. And we're sewing them in there because we want them to stay until our quilt top is basically done. Or until we don't need that line, registration line anymore. Alright, so we have all four of those. And this is, uh, I'm going to show you this one. This is what it's going to look like. So we have a basing stitch line that's shown here and a TRP line that's right there. Okay. So now, I have a lot of CIs out there, and I teach a lot of women how to do, to trim all of this off, and so I'm going to show you three or four of our favorite ways to work with these papers. So right now, I'm going to clean off the bottom of this, like this, and then I'm going to take 
my ruler and clean this edge off right now. Okay? And I want to clean it off to where I'm hitting the paper. Alright? So now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to grab a pair of scissors and I'm just going to cut right along that basting stitch line just a little bit. Right? You can buy these little razor blades and we're going to just take that and set it on the paper and get that started. And you have to hold on to the fabric pretty tight or it won't cut it. And you can trim that right on that TRP line. Okay? So now we've cut a quarter inch seam allowance on that. All right? So that's one way to do it. And if your razor is working really well, that's probably everybody's favorite way. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to trim it with a rotary cutter. Okay? To trim it with a rotary cutter, we actually have to fold the paper back and we just start trimming. And we have to just go slow. And we're not going to get as clean of a trim on it, but it's not going to make any difference. And when we're done, it's going to look just like that. Right? And the third way is my least favorite way. We're going to actually go like this. We're going to trim. We're going to clean off the bottom. Clean off the bottom there. And then you just take a pair of scissors and you just kind of cut this with scissors along here. And it's a lot messier. It takes a lot longer to do it. But when you're done, it doesn't really make any difference as well because we're going to clean that all off after a bit anyway. Right? So now we have that one. And I'm going to do the last one here. And we're going to go for the razor blade idea again and see if it works for me. the pattern tells us to do is to sew these pieces on right in your when we built these pieces they were set up to where this piece of paper was put glued to the wrong side of the fabric and the reason we wanted to glue it to the wrong side of the fabric so that you don't have the glue uh, showing on your fabric when you're all done one thing the paper, uh, instructions don't tell you is that you've got to remove this before we can do anything. So we're going to actually tear right along those basting stitch lines that we put in. And then we're going to take the next one and tear that. And don't just throw these pieces around because you don't want to lose which uh, the fabric that's the wrong side of the fabric. If you're using a batik, if you lose it, it's really easy to put these pieces on upside down. And if you just want to play it safe, you can actually leave one of the template pieces on it until you're ready. Okay? So now we're going to take the first piece, and we're going to pick this up, and in our instructions it tells us to take our glue pin, and run our glue right along the inside of that basting stitch. I'm not on the paper, I'm on the fabric. But I don't want to glue it so heavy that it's going to show past a quarter of an inch. Then I take my line here, and I'm going to match that basting line up with the one that was sewn onto this piece. And then all I have to do is just roll this around and glue it and the edge of the fabric is glued right next to the stitch line. And then we just keep rolling that around like this. Okay, now we're going to do that again. So pick this up, and put your glue on that edge, 
And it doesn't take a lot of glue. Then pick this piece up, match that basting line, because that basting line positions that piece so that you won't be short on either end. So it puts it right in the center for you. And you don't have to fold everything to try to figure out exactly where it's at. And the other thing to realize it is sometimes these pieces aren't all the same size because of the way we cut out the templates. All we have to do is make sure that you have that inside curve cut. This piece. I like to do these all at one time so that I don't forget the steps that I'm working through. And if you follow your instructions, it will tell you each step that I'm doing. Paper away. Match the basing stitch. That RP line. When you're rolling this around, don't stretch it because you don't want it to... If you stretch it, then it's not going to press out flat for you. Okay. Now that I have all of these on, I'm going to actually go to the iron and I'm going to glue right along this edge here, or not glue, but iron a little bit so that I know that the glue is not going to come loose. Also, it will steam down any puckers that might be in there and we don't want any puckers. So we're just going to take and run this right along the edge of that, steam that down. It also shrinks the fabric just a little bit for you so that if you have a wide pressure foot on your machine, it's going to flatten it out there a little bit further than what it would with your fingers, right? So now we're going to sew these. And we're going to show you two processes here for sewing. One of them we're going to sew with the fabric on the top and we're going to use the basting stitch as a guide for a quarter inch foot. All right, we're going to place this right along here. Now, doing this, we kind of have to work the fabric a little bit so we don't end up with puckers. And if you didn't sew a good, uh, right on that basting line that I told you to sew earlier, this is where your stitch line is going to be off a little bit. And let's see, my, I'm going to go down on my stitch length to a 1.8 again because I'm sewing on paper. Okay, and I'm going to do that process a second time. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to slide this under. And we're running the pressure foot right along the basting stitch because that's my quarter inch. So now when I cut these apart, we're going to flip it over and we're going to look at it and we're going to see if we stayed on our basting stitch line and I did a good job. We're going to look at the next one, and I did a pretty good job. I'm off just a hair on this piece. On this wide of a uh, handle or vein, whatever you want to call this piece, it's not going to make any difference, so we're just going to leave it alone, right? Now the second process, and both of these are written in your instructions, all right? The second process tells us to put the fabric on the bottom next to the feed dogs, all right? And we're going to start to use the paper and the line on the paper to sew. I'm going to slide this under and I want to make, get three or four stitches going with my paper and the needle needs to be down. 
Then we're going to lift the paper up. So your feet dogs were, are designed to pull that bias fabric in smoothly. If I just put weight on it and sew like this, I'm going to sew a whole bunch of puckers into it. So I have to li lift the paper and let that freely float underneath there, that fabric. And I'm going to sew very slow, right on the line. I like to teach this way to my beginners because they don't always know how to sew a perfect quarter inch. And this way they can follow the, the actual paper. And go slow because you need to give the feed dogs time to pull that fabric as it's sewing. And then you're going to look at it. Of course, it's right on the line. And that's going to go like that. So we're going to show that again. So place the fabric down and then start sewing right at the edge of the paper. And hold the paper up in the air. take these pieces to our iron and we're going to press each one of them. And that's a really nice looking curved seam. There's no puckers in it. It lays really flat and it does exactly what it's supposed to do. It was designed to do this. Right? So now we're going to the next thing it tells me to do is to actually sew another TRP line right here. And I have one here. What I want to do is the line actually goes all the way into here, but I'm going to actually stop sewing right about here. And if I do, if I forget and sew all the way, don't worry about it because we can fix that. All right? So I'm going to sew each one of those TRP lines. I'm going to start at the edge of the paper and sew in. And when I get to that dot or to the line, I'm going to stop to my dash line. And then I'm going to grab the next one. Now we're going to cut all of the threads on those, flip it over, cut the back side. trim these pieces up. So we have a straight line, a straight line, a smart corner, and then two curved lines. And I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can actually cut those curves. All right? So we're going to place a ruler on this. I'm just going to use my out of quarter ruler right now. Actually, I'm going to use this little ruler. I'm going to start right here on this end. Gonna trim. You need to set your fingers back away from the edge here because we're not we don't have a heavy ruler on here. So I don't want you to cut your fingers. Alright, so the first way I'm gonna show you for cutting is we're just gonna start this and then we're gonna lift the paper and we're gonna turn the paper in towards the blade. And we're going to trim. And then we're going to start here. And there's a little smart corner right here. And then I'm going to start. And then this time I'm going to actually pull the paper away from the blade as I'm cutting. Okay, so there's our first piece. Now I'm going to show that one more time and I'm going to show you how to use a different uh, curved ruler.
Okay, I have a ruler here and it's called a 12 inch wave ruler. It was actually designed for a different book that we actually use that we make a quilt. And you can actually make a whole quilt with this ruler uh, with no paper. But we like to use the ruler sometimes because it's got a curved edge, an outside curve and an inside curve on it. So I can place this along that outside curve. It's not gonna match up perfect, but it matches up enough that I can cut just a little and then I just keep rolling the ruler in. And a lot of people prefer to have a ruler there rather than to do the free motion cutting. And then we get that line cut. Now we're gonna use the inside curve. I have a smart corner right here at the end. And then I place that inside curve and I just keep rolling the inside curve up along that black line, my cut line, and then I cut my next piece. And I have this perfect shape here. Okay, so now the next thing I want to show you is after we get all of this done, we're going to remove the foundation paper. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is to come in here and I'm going to tear the paper right down along this seam. And it's going to come up against that TRP line, and then you're going to tear without, because you don't want the paper to pull out that TRP line, right? Then we're going to take this one, and we're going to tear that off, and then we're going to come back. Okay, so now I still have my paper underneath where the basting stitch was actually sewn on. So I'm going to actually flip this over and place the paper down against my board here. And I'm going to re-trim and I'm going to trim off those basting stitches. Okay. Notice that I didn't trim off what I just sewed on. All I did was just clean off the basting stitch. And now my seam allowance is a lot smaller than a quarter of an inch. All right. Which is fine but I don't have the extra bulk of that. Now all I have to do is just grab the rest of the paper and remove it. It's a lot easier to remove your paper before you sew than it is to try to remove, sew the pieces together and then remove it. And we're working with curved seams here, so there's no way you're gonna be able to do any sewing if you leave that paper on. So anyway, we have a really nice piece right here and that's the end of this unit. Okay, we're gonna show you the curved piecing part for the unit AC4, all right? So if you look at this, we have three sections. All three sections are curved piecing. They are also curved piecing on foundation paper. We have three registration lines that you do have to pay attention to on this unit. The first registration line matches the vein up with this section one. The second registration line matches the vein up to section three. And the third registration line that we are going to sew actually matches up the curved piecing to the next unit when we assemble the three units actually four units, okay? I've already started my pieces because last with the last unit, I showed you how to do the first piece on the last one other than it's just a mirror image, all right? So we've got the vein on. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and I'm gonna go ahead and trim the excess off right now. Okay, and then we're gonna flip this over and I'm gonna put my glasses on, right? And what we have to do is come in here and sew the next basting stitch line, all right? So we're gonna take it to the machine. Okay, place the pressure foot right along the basting stitch line and then sew. And remember, you have to have your basting stitch line set at about 2.8. And you want to sew right on that line because you're going to use that when you do your curved piecing. 
right? Once we get that line sewn, I'm going to show you a picture of it right here. The next thing I'm going to do is come over and sew the TRP line, the second TRP line. And your instructions will show you which ones are the first, second, and third TRP lines. Okay, so we got our TRP line sewn. Now we're going to cut the threads off the back of it. And we're going to flip it over and get rid of the threads on the front. So now what I have to do is we have to flip this over and we're going to take the scissors and we're going to cut right along that basting stitch line again and then we're going to find our razor and then we're just going to take this and trim that piece off just like that. You kind of miss the piece see if we can get it to trim it. Okay. Once we get that trimmed off, we can shut this little machine off. Now, on our foundation, or our section three, this is actually what section three looks like from the front side. What we need to do is mark that line, that TRP line on the back, and I've already done it. But what I do is I normally cut a little hole along that line, and then I can actually get a marking pencil, a chalk, and actually go in there and I want to mark that on the back side of the fabric so you don't see it when you're done all right after I get that marked I'm gonna line that up to the second TRP line that I did the sewing on we're gonna take and put our glue on and then we're gonna match that line which is right there and then we're going to do the same thing we did before, just roll this around and match up the raw edges of section three piece along that basting stitch line. Okay, then I'm going to go hit it with the iron and kind of smooth that out. On this piece, I'm just going to use this, uh, the basting stitch line as my guide rather than flip it over because this is a pretty big piece to just lay underneath like this. So we're going to go with what I told you was option one yesterday or with the last section we did, I should say. And we're going to sew right along the basting stitch line. take this and we're going to press that open All right. so after we get that pressed open we're going to come over here and we're going to sew the TRP line for the third one third piece for the third section here We're going to cut the threads and then we're going to come in here and we're going to grab our ruler and we're going to cut the straight lines. Then we're going to cut our smart corner off of the end. We're going to do the edges. When I sew TRP lines, I always like to sew the TRP lines before we do the cutting because then it leaves me a nice clean cut along the edge and it makes it a lot easier for those threads to be pulled out when we start pulling them out. Okay, so 
So we have it nice and trimmed off really nice. Now what I want to do is show you how to go in and trim the basting stitches off of those two seams. So we're going to remove the foundation paper. And getting the paper out of these little tiny seams isn't always the easiest thing, but you got to pull it out. The paper off my table. And then we'll get the very last of it pulled out. And you can actually trim these seams off with the paper on those the seam allowance. I just figured I'd pull it off because that's the last thing I need to do. And I sewed over and kind of attached that, so I'm going to cut that TRP line just a little bit. Now I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and trim off the threads from the basting line and then we'll go to the second one and we'll trim those threads. And now I have a nice clean cut on the back there. Now one of the things we can do at this time is we can actually remove the TRP lines. I like to remove them when I finish up a unit. If you have a pair of tweezers, you just grab a hold of the end of it and pull it out. And I don't have tweezers in my hand, so I guess I'll give up on that right now and I'll get my tweezers. So we don't want to move the, remove the one that's going to be used for the curved piecing. All we want to do is just remove the ones that we know that we're done with this piece. All right. So we're going to set these aside now and we're going to come back and do the curved piecing in just a little bit. to the moon star is to do the curved piecing. First of all, I want you guys to notice I have removed all the paper from all my units. And I like to do curved piecing without the foundation paper. Now some of my patterns will tell you to leave the foundation paper on the bottom unit and to remove it from the top. But when I start sewing these, I need to start here, then remove it, and then this. So I'm not going to have any paper on here anyway. So I might as well just get rid of all the paper. It comes off a lot cleaner when you remove it, and your curved seams look a lot nicer if you get rid of the paper before sewing them up. Okay? So here are our four units here. So we have to put A2 onto A1. And all we're going to do here, we don't really need to bind this center on this because it's such a small piece. So I'm just going to put some glue onto this side of it right here. And then I'm going to run my glue like this. So start at the first edge where you're going to start sewing. And then come back to the place where you're going to end the sewing. And you're going to glue that. Then you're going to work this piece back to the first part. Now, if you find that it doesn't seem to want to lay down, that's telling you that you're probably going to have to come in and clip. All right? What happens when you do paper piecing is all of these lines on each one of these little spikes is straight. So a lot of times your curved seams don't seem to want to lay down the way they would if you just cut a normal curve out of a piece of fabric because that's going to put it on bias. So the only way you can get that to really fit is to come back, we remove the glue here, and we're going to actually come in and clip just a little bit about an eighth of an inch a couple times in between each one of those little wedges. After I do the very first piece, then I figure out, well, I need to clip all of these, so I like to get the clipping done before I remove the paper because then I can see if I'm clipping in too far, all right? So remove the paper from the first one. Do your curved piecing. If you have to clip to get it to lay down, then go back and clip all your pieces before you remove the rest of the paper, all right? So now we're going to come back to our glue again, and we're going to put glue on this. 
going to glue the whole edge and then match up this edge and that gives me a perfect fit okay and all I had to do is just do a little bit of clipping and if you don't have to clip don't clip but if it won't lay down you're better off to clip than try to ease it in and do a pucker or a pleat in there so we have that piece laying down really nice now you have to know how to sew a quarter and seam now when you have the paper on there you can always look at that and say oh well there's my quarter inch seam however if you remove it nobody's going to know if you didn't do a perfect quarter inch anyway so i always figure it's close enough if it looks like a quarter inch as long as all my pieces go together if my pieces don't go together, then I have to go back sometimes and fix a seam allowance to get them to all fit. So the best thing you can do is learn how to do a quarter inch seam. And I have a quarter inch foot. there and now I'm going to press and we always give you pressing instructions in your pattern so you may want to read what the inst pressing instructions are in the pattern if you don't like the way we press it then press it the way you want to press because there's no rule to pressing most people like to press either to the dark side or they press the seams where the heaviest part of the seam actually lays flat so you just kind of have to look at it we try to design all of the pressing to where it kind of goes all in one direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise. And sometimes that's not the most efficient way to go about it. So on this piece, I'm actually going to press it into my center. All right, so we have that piece done. Now we have to join these two pieces unit AC3 and AC4. And remember we put in a bunch of registration lines and there's actually two registration lines and this one's almost gone but I can still see it. So I'm going to match these two right here and then I'm going to match this registration line with that point right there. I have a lot of bias on this so I shouldn't have to clip this one at all. So we're going to run our glue stick and I'm going to start basically in the middle here where these two lines are and get them matched up first. I'm going to flip this piece. We have right sides together. I'm going to match my first registration line and then I know that this other one comes down to that point and I'm going to match at that point. Now we're going to come up here and we're going to go back to the very beginning and I have a smart corner on this end so I'm going to match that smart corner first and it is a perfect match there and then we're going to take and push the rest of it down into the glue to where that lays flat. Now we're going to come down to the bottom and we're going to put our glue on the bottom and there's a lot of bias on that so be careful not to stretch it. And this one has a little bit more straight of the grain to it, so it may not want to give. And I might have to clip just a little bit, but I'm going to try it without clipping. And it fit really nice for me, so I'm not going to do the clipping. I'm going to put the glue on the glue stick. And now we're going to sew this seam. And this one is going to be sewn at a quarter inch. seam allowance we're going to open that up and now we're going to press all right 
And I think I'm actually going to press this one into the vein. All right, I don't know what my instructions say, but I kind of like the idea of it going that direction. And so that's what I'm going to do. And if I get any further along and I decide I want to change the direction of it, I can always come in, open up a little bit on my seam where it's sewn shut and, re and switch that seam allowance. Now we're going to take this piece and that one goes on like this, okay? And we're just going to flip this over. And I don't have to worry about any center, finding the center, because this piece is actually pretty small and there's no registration lines. And if I feel like you need to know exactly where the center of something is, I'm going to put a registration line there for you. But this is pretty little, so now I'm going to come back to this side and then I'm going to work that back to the other side. And there's a lot of bias here, so I doubt if we're going to have to do any clipping. So we matched up those corners, and then we're going to go back. I'm going to work this back into the center. And we have a perfect fit. So what's something I want to bring to your attention? So many people teach you to start sewing right here, sew to the center, and then sew off the end. And you're removing the pins as you go. Well, by the time you get to this side, a lot of times you end up an eighth of an inch of an overhang. You want to try to avoid that as much as possible. So see these two edge pieces here? I'm going to actually secure those and I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to run that pin down along the side. And the best pins you can use are long skinny ones. And I'm going to kind of weave this pin along that edge. And I'm, when I say weave, the reason why I weave is I want to stop that fabric from getting any kind of a twist to it at all. So this is what a weaved seam looks, a pan looks like, all right? Then I'm gonna come back to this side and I'm actually gonna weave this one to secure that one as well. I'm gonna find myself another long, skinny pin and put this in. So this will really help just in case my glue breaks loose on me, all right? So now I'm just gonna take this piece and I'm gonna kind of fold this in like an accordion so that this will lay flat for me before I start sewing. All right, then we pick this piece up, go to our machine, and then we're gonna start sewing that last curve. We're gonna pull that pin out once we get to it. And I like to always have my needle down when I do a curved seam so that if I have to lift my pressure for it to move it, the needle is down and it doesn't jerk my stitch. When you're doing curves piecing, the other thing you want to remember is you're not in a race, all right? The slower, and I don't mean you have to go really slow, but the slower you actually go, you're going to have a lot smoother seam when you're done. And you don't want one that has a lot of movement to it. It should be very, very smooth so that when you press it, it presses out really smooth. So we have our last piece joined on. I'm going to take it to my iron and for now I'm going to actually press this up and then I'll read my instructions later to find out which way I'm supposed to actually press it. Because my fabric is really light in color, I will probably choose the way I prefer to press it versus following the instructions just because 
I'm going to want to be a little careful on how my shadows show from my seams. The other thing I like to do is I always, I don't like stacks or um, opposing seams when I'm doing uh, a curved seam. I like to stack my seams. So on this piece, if I have the seam going this way, I'm going to have it going that way on all of the pieces. This is pressed down, so all my pieces are going to be pressed down. It's just my preference, and it's so that when we do our quilting, you can actually get up there next to the seam and not run into that. Now, when you have really light fabrics, if you have them pressed in opposing directions, you're going to see when you do the quilting all of the seams that are pressed one direction versus the other direction, and that's why I like to do uh, step seams. That's the last piece I'm the last uh, part to our video for our first block in Amethyst. And this block is called the Moon Star. Thank you for joining us for the first ever session of QuiltWorks Work Sessions. Earlier, I asked you to set aside the other two booklets of Moon Star and the associated fabrics. Now that you have learned the steps to make a Moon Star block, you can repeat this video to make the 16 diamond blocks that go in group A, round C, as well. These blocks are all the same colorway, but we encourage you to make them in two groups of eight. This way, you can set up your unit charts and follow the cutting instructions, which are set up for creating eight units at a time. Please finish all 24 moon star blocks between now and October 20th if you can so you are ready to move along to the next units with Judy. Remember, you can access these YouTube videos at any time from this day forward on our YouTube channel. You can also quickly find them on the pattern page on our website. We hope you enjoyed the lessons Judy has shared with you today and hope you join us at 3.15 p.m. for a Facebook Live event on the QuiltWorks.com Facebook page. If you can't join us there, we'll see you on October 20th.